What's up, my friends? Like, literally just this moment, it started, like, a rainstorm is starting outside. Wondered if it was going to rain all day. And I was sitting there earlier going, come on, rain, I'd like to sit out and enjoy it. And it's like, it's like the universe knows. Oh, you sitting down to do a stream? Now we'll start the rain. It's like, come on, man. Come on, bro. I'm here to talk about the truth about Church's Chicken. Lay the reality on you guys. Because I finally went. And uh, the universe is, is out there goofbagging around. Whatever. Whatever. I'm sure it'll be over. I'm sure it'll all be done by the time I'm done here. Because that's the way it works, right? But anyways. Anyways. Let's, uh, let's share the live stream link first things first. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, there we go. That's good. And then we will switch this up here. Ah, there we go. What up, Ang Kentucky, Millmaster, Ned, DB, Potts, Yamagoro, Zircon, Error, Bob, Juglum, Gossett, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Stormtrooper, Jess, some, what's going on? How you guys doing? When I was out today, I stumbled on, like, the Giant Tiger is like a discount, it's like a discount Walmart or whatever, right? Like, a very, very low-rent Walmart. But they had official, official brand yo-yos for like five bucks. And I have been looking around at different places for a decent yo-yo. I had a I had like an official yo-yo yo-yo back in the day, decades ago. So when I saw it, I was like, is this going to be garbage? Cuz I remember when me and Moxman went to the Great Wolf Lodge, I got a uh like a wooden yo-yo there with my name on it or whatever and it was crap. It was crap. So I figured that this probably wouldn't stand up and actually be a proper yo-yo but it is it is and it was only five bucks i mean i guess it's just a piece of wooden string but i don't know i'm just surprised that you can find a workable yo-yo that's not complete garbage for that price very pleased too i was almost not going to get it but carly's like yeah, grab it go for it go for it because i just thought it wasn't going to work out but she was right she was right esoteric can i walk the dog yep i can rock the i can walk the dog i can rock the baby in the cradle that all that all that goodness i can walk the dog and let it off the leash where it runs across the room i i learned a number of different tricks with the yo-yo back in the day i remember when i first started using one and i managed to smash myself in the back of the head with it like almost immediately i'm trying to yo-yo and it loops around bam right in the back of the head right in the back of the head what up cracking and how's it going kit soon you're here tonight which is weird all right if you say so doesn't seem weird to me jess you can never do tricks only up and down yeah your mom's good at that trick the the up and down trick <laughs> so the trip to the giant tiger proved to be valuable in the fact that there was a yo-yo and they had some popcorn so we're gonna see we're going to see if their popcorn is low rent garbage or it turns out to be all right. Because it is the Papa, Papa Corn brand or whatever it is. It's good times. It's good times. Caustic. Oh, bro. You need to go and submerge yourself in a bathtub full of water and stay under there forever. That's terrible. Anyone want to buy a broken yo-yo? No strings attached. I hope your teeth fall out, bro. <laughs> so church's chicken man church's chicken had never been there went there for the first time got three different categories to rate them on actually you know what i'll let you guys decide in which order we talk about the stuff all right so uh what should we talk about first and then I just put yes and no as the options. <laughs> All right. Chicken. 
poutine or the biscuit. All right. This this poll will determine all of our collective fates. All right. So choose well. Some you can just buy the strings. That's true. That's true. You can. Math, math, Marticle, bro. Why, why are you doing it with the fucking one five? You can just, you can just say, pointus here. All right. You can say I love fucking fat dongs in my mouth, bro. This is a fucking safe space. You can talk about how much you love weenuses and all your holes without worry of being judged. <laughs> Esoteric poutine at church's chicken. Yes, specifically in Canada, right? So that, as far as I understand, isn't available in places like America, which I'm surprised. I'm surprised because, like, I don't know, man. It feels like poutine isn't really... Like, the fact that it's, like, a Canadian thing always feels strange to me because everybody loves gravy and French fries and cheese and putting them all together feels really easy, you know? Juglum poutine, yes, unless you're uh, unless you're French. I was with a French lady, and she called it poutine, which is, I mean, probably how you're supposed to pronounce it, but whatever. Everyone calls it poutine, and yes, it, it, it doesn't make... It's literally covered in brown gravy, and you start by calling it poo. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. This is a basement of emotional safety. <laughs> <laughs> Stormtrooper Penn Island. I know a chick who worked at a laser tag place and she had no idea that like people would ask her for names like that. Can my name be Penn Island? And she would put it in and they'd be laughing. <laughs> These little kids. <laughs> oh, poutine was the number one vote for a while. Now it's switched up to chicken. Hmm. Hmm. What do we got percentage-wise? Chicken and poutine tied at 40%. Biscuits only at 20%. Limp it for the limp it for the biscuit. Whatever the hell that means. Some you had a poutine for dinner tonight, but it was more like loaded fries because I had lots of toppings. I don't like going hardcore with all the toppings on the French fries, Bo. Oh shit. I just ended the poll. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys are done voting. I didn't mean, I just meant to close it so you could continue voting, not end it, but whatever. We've got the official, the official standing order of the stuff. It goes poutine, chicken, and then biscuit. All right. So I went down to the church's chicken and first things first, it's a new place in St. Catharines. The restaurant itself looked pretty nice. They don't have a lot of seating really there was like what four sets of tables four sets of tables i mean there was like two smaller tables pressed together to make a bigger table right so there was like four settings like that and then a middle area like a little island where you could pull up with some stools although one of the stools was already wonked so i'm not sure how long they've been open but i don't think they've been there for very long either way the overall restaurant itself was pretty clean, looked pretty good. The bathroom was solid, all that. Like, it wasn't some gross location, so that's obviously great. The The surprising thing for me was I decided, um, we looked at the menu, and I decided we were going to get an eight-pack of chicken. So we got the mild kind because I ain't down with the spiciness. So an eight-piece chicken that comes with a large side, and they let you pick poutine as the side. So... That was pretty sweet, being able to roll that into the combo with the chicken and the biscuits. I was not expecting that. I thought, like, for some reason, I thought the poutine was going to be a completely separate entity that I was going to have to order, or I thought there was going to be an upcharge for it. Later on, I realized that the menu said you could add any large side, and large sides were, like, seven twenty, and the poutine was, like, 7 bucks. So... It makes sense why they let you include it as a side when they charge less for it than the other large sides. So, but that's what I wanted, right? I didn't want more French fries. I wanted to try it for real. Like, I like to see how different places do poutines. I don't like smokes poutinery. 
their poutines are gross and they put peas and other weird things in them and they serve them cold and crappily so they sucked the best poutines that i've ever had were from a place that isn't in business anymore unfortunately so that's like the the high watermark what up pierce so yeah like um there's there's a whole range of of places you can get poutines from some place like if you go to pizza pizza for example they use vegetable gravy like vegetarian gravy which is just it's hateful it's awful carly likes it for some unknowable reason but i found it to be dreadful but fast food places can deliver up a pretty decent poutine we went to the burger king in the falls the one right there on clifton hill and the poutine was hot um like it was hot and tasty the whole thing it came together pretty well zane churches is good but the locations are usually in the hood there's i don't know if there's any place in st Catharines you would call the hood but where they're located definitely isn't the hood me and carly were looking around and we were like yo there's a lot of there's a lot of things around here a lot of stores a lot of restaurants there's a grocery store right there. They were pointing at the one building. They'd probably be pretty sweet to live at the one building here. So it's definitely not in like the crappiest area. I don't even know 100% where the crappiest area in St. Catharines is. It might have been where I was living downtown where sometimes people got shot or stabbed at night, right? So like <laughs> I might have already been living in the worst place. There's probably somewhere worse. Maybe up Queens. Yeah, yeah, it's the Queenston area, isn't it? That's where it was, for real. That's where you'd find the two-toothed hookers and stuff. Caustic, am I going to make it to any conventions this year? I have, uh, I'm going to a convention in two days. I'm going to a, I'm going to the Comic-Con this weekend. So that should be a good time. And I'm probably going to end up going to the Command Fest that's happening in Toronto later this year as well. So we'll see. We will see. So yeah, obviously you guys have a different setup when it comes to where you find these restaurants. But here, Church's Chicken's just like all... Th there was a whole bunch of chicken restaurants in the area. I, I've, it's kind of crazy to me. They opened up like just down the street from a Mary's Brown, which is just down the street from a KFC, which by the way, KFC is the worst they make the worst chicken. They are nightmarishly bad. So the combo that we got was an eight piece and it came with the poutine. And with tax, it came to like $37 or something like that. So to compare roughly to like Popeye's, it's pretty much the same price. I think it might have been like a dollar more. Popeye's is currently like the top level chicken place that we had gone to that I use for reference to other chicken places. But KFC used to be amazing. Like back in the day, KFC was incredible. But they fell off and they fell off hard to the point where every once in a blue moon, I'm like, I should give them a chance again to see if they've improved. And they have not. Uh, I think the last time they were even somewhat okay was back in the day when they originally released the Double Downs, which was at least a decade and a half ago, right? They're awful. They're awful. Mill Master, chicken's cheap, and people are tired of paying $20 for burgers that are half soy. Yeah, that is, that is like absolute nonsense, bro. Absolute nonsense. Pierce, your favorite seeing four different coffee shops on four corners of an intersection? How about on two different corners of an intersection you have starbucks across from each other and it's like don't you have like like franchise rules that stop this from happening and how are you both staying in business selling overpriced ripoff drinks to morons right yeah i'd like to pay 12 dollars for a drink you're an idiot like well yeah that'll be four dollars for a cup of tea i should get to teabag you if four dollars is included yo that's insane ac am i in the states nope i'm in canada bro I'm in Canada. Pierce, there's two subways uh, across the street from each other. Subway sucks. Their, their subs are, they're the worst sub restaurant. They are the worst. The absolute worst. 
I do not like them. I do not like them. All right, so we've got we've got indicators to let you know what what part of the um, what part of the review that we're in. So the voting said, uh, wait, it was poutine first. Okay, we're starting with the poutine. All right then. Poutine. Production value. That was so good that I'm gonna play it one more time. Poutine. Whoa! Whoa! You know what? I didn't even think about it, but I I should probably just like load that image in so that you guys just don't see it for one split second, right? <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh oh no, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh Okay. It should be this one. Oh, you guys like that? They, look at how big it blew up the image, man. Look at how big it blew up the image. It's so huge. Hold on. Let me shrink it down. Boop. Boop. All right. Hold on. Oh, wait. What's what's going on over here? Kraken Ang says Lord with a Goard. What the hell is Lord with a Goard? Listen, man. Listen. Listen. Sometimes I don't know how to cope with your brain damage, Krakening. You're lord of the board, but I don't know what you're saying. It's not even, like, if you were spelling gourd, that's, it's got a U in it. What the hell's a goard? Travesty. Either way, you're lord of the board. <laughs> Thanks to the super chat. I'm gonna heart it. Oh, that you were trying to actually spell gourd? That's funny. That's funny. Okay, so this this is their poutine. All right, hold on. I'm gonna shrink it down a bit more. Zorp. Okay, this is their poutine. Poutine is a really really simple ingredients list. It is straight up just gravy, cheese curds, and French fries. That's it. That's it. Gravy, French fries, and cheese curds. So if you've ever had fries with gravy, it's just adding in cheese curds. Now, there's two schools of thought on poutine. There's people who think that the curds should be like they are in this, all lumpy and unmelted. And there's people who believe that the cheese should be melted and the thing should be hot enough that all the cheese melts, right? I fall into the category of I want it hot enough that all the cheese melts. So this did not come that way, right? And even though it was pretty hot on the bottom, stirring it around, moving it around wasn't enough. Like if it comes and the curds look curdish on the top normally, that's fine. You stir it around, it'll melt in, that's cool. It didn't melt in. It didn't melt in. So I was disappointed by that. The, 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 they're basically like cold cheese curds in, a, in like a somewhat hot, somewhat warm, bed of french fries and gravy they did get the food to us very quickly but the poutine was i wasn't happy with that part of it the gravy was okay it was all right and the french fries were all right so basically the poutine is middle of the road i would say give it like a six i'd say like a six at best it's not it's not a banger poutine. It's not anything that I would actively go. I wouldn't I wouldn't get it again, but I didn't hate it, right? And like honestly, I don't rate foods out of 10 that frequently anyhow. So a rating of 10 is just seems it seems appropriate to use that scale. I would say this is a 6. Somebody else might find it to be a 7, but for me it's a six trending towards a five, right? So, meh. How was the mouthfeel? Yeah, normal. Just French fries. Just French fries with gravy on it. So, it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't like you know what? Actually, the French fries could have been cooked a little bit more. They could have been a little firmer. They were pretty sogified, right? Having French fries that can reasonably stand up against the gravy isn't the worst thing in the world. If if they start to get a little more soggy once you get closer to being done, 
that's okay. But on my poutine scale, the poutine we had at Burger King beats this. So, meh. This is, this actually was, I would say, the least, the least enjoyable part of the meal. But it wasn't bad. It just wasn't amazing. I had been, I had been hoping for a good poutine, right? Like genuinely. And so I felt let down in that regard. But at the same time, you are going to a fast food restaurant, right? So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The service was good. The food was there fast. And this was the, this was the most underwhelming part of the meal, probably because I had particular expectations that I wanted to have met and they were not met. So I'm going to stick this with a six. All right. So that's, that's the poutine. Okay. So then the next thing we got on the list was the chicken. Chicken. Give you double, double dose of my goodness. Chicken. <laughs> All right, all right. Oh, hold on. That's gonna play that again if I don't click there. All right, and then the chicken picture. The chicken picture is right here. Okay. So that should be this one. Wait, that's not the right one, is it? That's got like everything. Where's the one that I have that's just chicken that I used for that? Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So there's the box of chicken. Technically the biscuits are, are tucked in the side too, but whatever, whatever. So the chicken was more of a winner than the poutine for sure. The chicken was nice and fucking hot. It was almost too hot carly was worried that she was going to burn the inside of her mouth because she did that like two or three days ago on something and got herself good so she was paranoid and she sat back and waited i did not wait i grabbed a big fat drumstick and i pulled it out and it really was a big fat drumstick i was impressed with the size of the drumstick when it came to the chicken i had a drumstick and i had one of the breast meat chunks right like white meat the goodness so overall, it was good, man. It was nice and hot. It was greasy. The chicken, especially the the white breast chunk or whatever, was like I the drumstick was was very big, but it was also kind of I don't I don't know how to describe the chicken except to say it was the tiniest bit wonky when I was eating it. So there's only parts of the drumstick that I was willing to eat and the rest I just kind of left off to the side, but the white breast chunk was awesome and the drumstick was giant. So even though I didn't eat the whole thing, it was kind of whatever. No, I wouldn't call it gamey some. It wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't a flavor issue. It was more of a texture issue. Maybe it was a bit rubberish a little bit, maybe a little bit, a tiny bit. What up, Joseph? What up, Miko? So yeah, overall, the chicken was pretty good. It was pretty good. I do have to say that Popeye's does do it better than Church's. Popeye's chicken beats Church's chicken. But other than that, I would say it's it's come in second place. So it now stands above any of the other like fried chicken restaurants that I've tried in recent times. I mean, obviously, if you go back in time enough, KFC was baller, but that doesn't matter anymore. That was a million years ago. So by today's standards, Church's Chicken is good. And I'm glad that we got an eight piece because it means that there's still more sitting in the fridge. I brought it home with me so that we could um, have it like a second time, which is great. I very much like, I very much enjoy getting a box of chicken because it carries over well to the next day. You can heat it up in an air fryer or something like that. And it does, like, there's certain things that when you reheat them, depending on how you do it as well, it really doesn't translate well. But this is not one of them. Church's chicken was good. What was better, Church's chicken or Medieval Times? Medieval Times food was never good. So <laughs> Church's chicken beats, they beat them hardcore. Like, hardcore. 
Miko, you moved to a town with only a KFC, so you miss Popeyes? Ooh, with only a KFC, it'd be like, well, I guess you better learn how to make fried chicken at home then, bro. Because KFC, it can't even eat it. I can't even eat it. So I give the I give Church's chicken big thumbs up. Like the chicken itself gets a big thumbs up for me. Uh, if I'm using a scale of 10 is Popeyes, then Church's is like an eight and a half to a nine. Like they are right up there. Carly agreed with me that overall it wasn't as good as Popeyes, but but it was good. And that leads me to the final the final item, which is biscuits. Biscuits. There you go. That was kind of loud. <laughs> the biscuits. The honey butter biscuits and oh my god they are so good they are so good i had no idea biscuits could be good popeye's biscuits are awful they're little salty pucks that i hate like they are the worst and i only enjoyed uh, a popeye's biscuit one time actually enjoy is a strong word for it I could tolerably eat one once when we got them super fresh and that was it. But the biscuit, the biscuit was the first thing I tried actually. It just pulled out, put it on a piece of paper in front of me and I was like, let's get the biscuit out of the way because biscuits suck. So let's take a bite of this so I can say that I tried it and we'll move on to what I'm here for, the poutine and the chicken. And I took a bite out of the biscuit and I went, oh bro, it's soft and fluffy and delicious. Like... It's great. It was, I ate the whole fucking biscuit. And when we were done, like eating, I'm like, make sure the biscuits are in the box. We're taking the biscuits home. We're not throwing them away. Like for real, for real, for real. They now, I had no idea that biscuits could not suck. I had no clue, no clue. But yeah, Church's Chicken's biscuits are legit. I saw that they had them individually on the menu where you can just order like a handful of biscuits. And I understand why people would. They're great. They're great. Jester Popeye's biscuit is weak. Agreed. Agreed. Fisher, the only restaurant in your town worth eating at is a Denny's? That's rough. That's rough. Caustic. At the medieval times you went to, if one person had to go take a leak, everyone in the row has to stand up. Yeah, that's how it is at uh, the one I went to too, bro. That's probably standard issue. That's there's no there's no space to walk behind anybody. You like I was glad that we were at the very end of the one table so we didn't have to worry about passing by a ton of people. Red Lobster makes a dangerous biscuit. See, I had heard before about their cheddar biscuits or whatever and I just waved it away because until today I didn't believe that there could be a biscuit worthy of your time. A, a biscuit worthy of the taste buds. But I have been shown the true way. I went from like, why would I ever want a biscuit to, I'm going to try biscuits at different places now. Church's biscuits. Legit. Legit. Machine says, okay, I got it. When I go to Canada, get poutine from Burger King, chicken from Popeye's, and biscuits from Church's. That sounds like an awesome meal, bro. 100%. 100%. Stormtrooper. Sell the, the make the stuff at home kits. They never taste like the real deal, bro. You know, they say, oh, it's the same thing, but it isn't, but it isn't. So yeah, the biscuits, the biscuits get like a 10 from me. They get a 10 because they've literally transformed my view of biscuitry. Up until now, I, I it was limp biscuit, right? Now it's hard biscuit, but not hard, dry, and bad biscuit. <laughs> I did it all for the chicken. Yeah, the chicken. <laughs> George, the chicken's rumored to be made with a lot of lard. Well, I got news, George. So am I. I too am made with a bunch of lard. And I am delicious. Put me in your mouth. Put my biscuits in your mouth. <laughs> you can find out what my lard content is. <laughs> Caustic, there's a KFC in your town that's shared with a Long John Silver. Everything tastes fishy. Ew. 
That's disgusting. They found a way to make KFC even worse. Make it taste like fish. No thank you. No thank you, bro. And don't worry, George. I'm not a moron. I don't go to a restaurant that's selling fried chicken and think to myself, this is healthy and low in fat content, right? It's fucking fried chicken. What? what? Watch out. It's not healthy. Fucking duh. Right? Come on, man. Come on, man. Jess, they explode food in a container and measure the heat increase to measure calories. That's how they're going to measure how many calories you are, Jess. They're going to explode you. They're going to blow you up. But yeah, for real. For real. The biscuits. Wait, did I not? I, oh, I didn't even put the image of the... Hold on. The biscuit must... I will show you the biscuit. I will show you the biscuit. Look at that. Actually, it looks kind of weird in the picture, doesn't it? It looks like a slimy alien egg or something. It's delicious. Delicious. People worried about lard eat turkey bacon. I feel like... I feel like turkey bacon should come with like a number for a helpline where they're just like, you're not thinking of ending it, are you? You know? <laughs> Like turkey bacon, that is an admission of, I mean, failure. Failure as a human. You can't eat turkey bacon. It's the worst. It's the worst. Looks like a giant hash brown. It looks like deliciousness, bro. Honestly. It's half making my mouth water looking at it. I was surprised. I was blown away. I was blown away by the biscuit, man. So, yeah. The, the ratings are... Uh, like a, a six and a half to a seven on the poutine, an eight and a half to a nine on the chicken, and a ten on that biscuit, based on like my previous experience with food, right? So it's not like I am some gourmand who has tried all kinds of amazing stuff. So keep that in mind. But that that is my official that is my official decision on churches. Fish, yeah, exactly. I like bacon and I like turkey, but you can't, you can't make, you can't make turkey bacon. You can't do it. You can't do it. Ugh. It's crazy that you gotta like, you gotta burn or just destroy food to figure out how many calories are in it. Remember when somebody was trying to sell an app or something saying, you can just point your phone at any food and it'll tell you its calorie count. And it's like, that's not, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's not a fucking thing, you liar. Either way, very happy with my trip to churches. Absolutely would go again. Absolutely. Would avoid the poutine just because it doesn't, it doesn't deliver the expectations I have so I would try probably next time like if I was getting the same combo or whatever I would try a different side like french fries I don't know if they have mashed potatoes honestly I didn't look at any of the other sides because I knew I wanted poutine what up octopus Jess you couldn't eat two plates of Chinese food today you're not able to gorge anymore you don't need to gorge bro gorging ain't good for you you need to eat reasonable amounts of food Especially if you're not out there doing a ton of stuff, right? If you're living a half sedentary life, you don't want to be cramming yourself full of too much food, bro. You do not want that. That leads to bad times. But yeah, man. Church is legit. It's legit. Jester, nope, never heard of, never even heard of a place called Shelby's, so. If it ain't, if it ain't in my area, I definitely can't check it out, right? Also, I don't know, the more stuff you put on, like, french fries don't need that much on them. Gravy and cheese is pretty much the match, max. Zircon, would I go to churches over Popeye's for the 
biscuits. I mean, if I want fried chicken, Popeyes is gonna win. Popeyes is gonna win. Like I would go to I would go and get Popeyes chicken before I would get Church's chicken. And the biscuits aren't good enough for me to go, I'll go for the lesser chicken. Do you know what I mean? So while I rate the biscuits very highly, they don't have enough to influence my purchase. I'd rather just throw out the biscuits that Popeyes gives me and eat their chicken over churches. But it's not like if it turns out the Popeyes shut down or wasn't open that day, I wouldn't be disappointed having to go to churches and get their chicken instead. You know what I mean? Ned, yeah, you are. You're, you're right. Combining two things and making them worse. Turkey bacon action. The chicken was good. The chicken was good. How do you eat poutine? With a fork. With a fork. So I like to have the cheese melted. I don't want too much cheese on any, like, I don't want to eat a huge mouthful of cheese. I just want some cheese on my gravied fry. You know what I mean? So yeah, using a fork, bro. Jess, you blend poutine and drink it. <laughs> There's a way to get super fat. What's even the point then? You know? Just, you may as well just drink gravy. <laughs> poutine is legit. So, I still want a poutine from somewhere else. The one we had did not, did not satisfy my poutine lust, right? So, but overall, churches is definitely on my list of would eat there again. Would get food from there again, 100%. 100%. Fisher, go make some dip, because all you can think about is food. Hell yeah. Eating's awesome. Eating is a very enjoyable thing to do. Sometimes too enjoyable. That's how you can end up as a big fat magoo when you just cram stuff in your face hole and don't pay attention to what you're putting in your bodies. Just keep eating. I've been there. Actually, I did it with poutines. I ate a whole bunch of them. I ate a whole bunch of them. Yeah, Shelly, we already talked about that. We talked. We specifically talked about that as part of the name, bro. What up, Thompson? How you doing, buddy? So yeah, it was it was a satisfying meal. After I ate it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm full. It was satisfyingly greasy. All of it. It all came together quite well. Uh, the poutine being the low point of the meal was still like enjoyable just wasn't exactly what i was looking for thompson you had some good mexican food tonight nice i i used to eat mexican way more when i was in toronto there was this one restaurant we went to where the mexican food was really good but it had this weird little waitress that would stomp around she was she was a strange one <laughs> but the food was good and it came out like piping hot. Like, don't touch your plate. You burn yourself. Jester, you try and eat healthy, but we all get cravings for junk? Yup. I try to not overindulge in junk. Like, if I get fucking baked, I can eat way more trash. So, I try and be cognizant of how... Instead of taking a bag of chips and sitting down with it now, I put an amount in a bowl and just like, okay, I'm just going to eat what I got in the bowl and I'm not going to eat anymore. Right? That's it. That's it. Of course, sometimes I do get up and put more in the bowl, but at least then you're aware. You're aware of what you're consuming because I've sat down with a bag of chips before, ripped, and just like started eating. And then I'm like, yo, did I just eat 90% of this big bag of chips, bro? It's excessive. Yeah, it gets to a point where it's just excessive. And you're like, yo, uh, am I even like tasting and enjoying this stuff? Or am I just like cramming my body without paying attention? Get all the calories in there. No master, no. There's no such thing as venison flavored venison flavored drinks at Tim's. They, they don't make meat flavored drinks. They did recently get into pizzas and they look very mediocre. Like, 
the pictures that they put up of them, which is supposed to be the enticing, wow, ultimate looking version of it, is so like whatever. When you look at it, you're just like, mm, mm. Pierce, oh yeah, the calorie count for the day can easily get hosed. Millmaster, what about Mary Browns? Yes, there is a Mary's Mary Browns, and it is near the churches. I don't know anything about Mary Browns. I have not eaten there that I can ever remember. So if I did, it would have to be, have been like decades ago. I literally can't recall it at all. So I don't have any opinion on their food. I don't even know 100% what they offer. I mean, I know it's chicken, but that's it. Stormtrooper, you got Moose Tracks ice cream. Yep, we got that here too. Uh, Shelly, you're eating an $8 Wawa pizza. Middle of the road. Nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong with a middle of the road pizza if that's what you're down for, right? There are some pizza places where you can pick up like a walk-in a walk-in medium for like eight bucks, you know? It used to be cheaper, but that's how things go. And it's totally fine, especially if you eat it hot. Mary Brown's is a better KFC? Well, I mean, anything. Like eating dirt outside the KFC is better than KFC. So that's, <laughs> that, that's a non-existent bar. You know what I mean? Like, it's impossible to be under that bar. What, they have poutines at Mary Brown's too? Huh. Well, maybe at some point I'll have to I'll have to go to Mary Brown's and then offer my opinions on their food as well. Octopus, you got a barbecue because it's too hot to cook in the house. I mean, it does it does get pretty hot when you've already dealing with the heat from the outside and you start cranking it in the kitchen. Do they have golden skillets? Is that like a breakfast restaurant? Golden griddle? Miko, once you had Popeyes, nothing else is good. I feel you, bro. The first Popeyes I ever encountered was when I lived in Toronto. They opened one up like pretty much around the corner from my house. And I went there what felt like almost every day. I remember when they had a, a deal for two bucks. You get two pieces of chicken. Two pieces of chicken and a biscuit for like two bucks. But the guy who, liked, who owned the Popeyes liked me. So he let me switch my biscuit for a mashed potato. So I get two pieces of chicken and a mashed potato for $2. But the chick who worked there liked me too. So she would secretly slide me a big chunk of white meat that you have to pay like two fifty dollars extra for as one of my two pieces. So I'd get a drumstick and a huge breast chunk and a mashed potato for $2. Like, for real. Unbeatable. Unbeatable deal. So I went there all the time. Ned, little shocked that a Newfoundlander hasn't had Mary Browns. They're everywhere there. Bro, the place I'm from in Newfoundland had like a thousand people when it, when it was at its biggest, right? It like had one restaurant, one convenience store. Like, if you wanted to rent a movie, you had to walk, you had to walk to like fucking Porta Bass or whatever, bro. Like, it was, <laughs> it was tiny with nothing, with nothing. Just what year? That would have been, I'd say 14, 15 years ago. So I'd say that was like 2010-ish. 2010. Oh, Golden Skillet Chicken is what became Mary Brown's. Ah, okay. It's been around since the 60s? Hmm. I saw the Mary Brown's today. I walked by it with my church's chicken. Oh, Machine. Yeah, Little Caesars pizzas are really, yeah, they're, they are really low quality. The only thing I'd rather have them than is like a frozen grocery store pizza because that's literally the lowest tier. You know, the ones where there's barely any flavor and the dough is terrible 
and they put enough cheese on it for you to see that there's the white cheese on it, but you can see, like, each piece of mozzarella is, like, crisscrossing. You know what I mean? Like, there's so little mozzarella to tomato sauce that it's, like, technically they have mozzarella across the pizza, but... Mary Brown's tater poutine is really good. Huh. Shelly, I never I never went to Little Caesars when it was good, so there was no there was no glory days for me. They folded and came back as gas station pizza. <laughs> I don't know uh, who's worse, Little Caesars or Pizza Pizza, because Pizza Pizza can be really bad. The Pizza Pizza downtown had some really garbo pizza, and I thought all Pizza Pizzas had garbo pizza, but then when I went to Niagara College, they brought in pizza from some Pizza Pizza, and wherever it was they made it, by the time they brought it, it was still piping hot, and it was delicious. I have no idea. I have no idea how you end up doing such a bad job at one place and such a good job at another. Don't you guys get all your ingredients from corporate? I'm so confused. Jess, you can buy a frozen pizza, add cheese and toppings, and it's not bad. That's true. I've done that. Take some bacon that you've cooked out of the freezer, cut it up into little pieces, sprinkle it across. But, like, straight out the box, those pizzas are awful. Just awful. Little Caesars were in Kmart's. They never... Yeah, they didn't have that here. Kmart's had no food in them. Uh, Zeller's had little cafeterias. And now the the Bay or whatever um, owns Zeller's. And they're like, Zeller's is back. And you're like, where is it? And it's just like, oh, we hung a sign in this part of the store. This area is the Zeller's. And it's like, what? Yeah, this is the Zeller's. No, it's not. No, it is a Zeller's, and we brought it back. No, this is just some random crap that you're selling. No, this is a Zeller's. We revitalized it. It's like, you're not fucking fooling anybody. And like, please, we're desperate. We're used to selling crap to old ladies, and nobody's coming to shop here anymore. So, remember Zeller's? It's back. And it's like, what do you have? Do you want a jug that you can put lemonade in? What? <laughs> Shelly, Pizza Pizza was the name, is the name of the pizza chain. And I always thought it was funny that Little Caesar says Pizza Pizza. So like Pizza Pizza is literally get, getting free advertising from them. Man, I can still remember super old Pizza Pizza, pizza ads. But yeah, I don't think they're owned by the same company. I think that uh, I think that Pizza Pizza just named themselves that. They might have done it like they might have come along after Little Caesars and been like, "Their catchphrase is Pizza Pizza. Let's call ourselves that. They can eat our ass." <laughs> Fisher never heard of Emos. Never heard of that pizza chain, bro. Shelly, nothing's, nothing's going to beat pizza marketing as far as I'm concerned for the, then the nothing beats the Noid, man. Domino's, Domino's Noid, avoid the Noid, that, that's super, super memorable marketing. And speaking of super memorable marketing, it's time for me to get some more beverage. So enjoy this. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatcher goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. 
when Hatcher goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatcher goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. All biscuits. Right. Oops, the biscuit. <laughs> the biscuit's still there. Biscuit. Uh, Jess, never heard of Red Swan Pizza. Never heard of that one. Little Caesars started in 1959 and uh, Pizza Pizza started in 1967, according to Mill Masters Research. Uh, some, is it National Yo-Yo Day? Are you fucking with me? Oh, what? 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 Are you kidding me? That's amazing. It literally is. It literally is. Bro, I had no idea. The only reason I got it is because it was yo-yo brand yo-yo and it was like five bones. It was five bones. I was like, all right, you know what? I'll get it to see if it's actually like yo-yo quality. And it is. It genuinely is. But yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea. Thompson, you have lupus here in Chattanooga. We're talking about food, not your fucking medical calamities. All right. That's the disease with a thousand faces. Juggalum, the glow Duncan Imperial. I don't know what that is. Roughneck. Yeah, you missed the discussion of churches. You'll have to watch the replay to learn the truth, man. Thompson, that's the name of the local pizza chain. What? We got lupus. Who wants lupus? Not me. Hey, you guys, you guys want cancer? You want you want cancer? Lupus pizza. <laughs> hey, anybody want some Tourette's taffy? Man, that's sweet that it's International Yo-Yo Day. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you know what, Stormtrooper? I don't know how I rank Domino's overall for pizza. They're lower on the scale, that's for sure. Pizza Hut is, like, my favorite, but I do acknowledge that they're not, like... They don't make the best pizza. They don't make the healthiest pizza, but I particularly enjoy their their pan pizzas. Duncan is the world's number one yo-yo company. Oh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I have an authentic pro yo-yo. It's authentic, made in China. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I had yo-yos when I was younger and genuinely enjoyed using them and doing tricks with them. And in all honesty, I'd had a hard time coming across any yo-yos that seemed decent out in the wild because I'm not really very much of an order thing. Like, I wouldn't be like, man, I want a yo-yo. I'll go order one online. I'd be like, man, I want a yo-yo. It'd be cool if I ran into a place that had one. And then I just promptly forget about those desires and don't end up getting a yo-yo, right? 
Uh, do I like Neapolitan style pizza? No, nah, Roughneck, I don't. I don't. Shelly? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I was you, I wouldn't eat Pizza Hut. <laughs> if it's going to make you crap your pants. <laughs> no. Definitely not, bro. Definitely not. <laughs> Honestly, there's no fast food that attacks my guts on those levels. If I want to have an intestinal emergency, uh, it's got to be like combos. The combos, those pretzel things with gank in the middle, they attack my insides like 100%. Stormtrooper Arby's reminds you of a loose girlfriend. <laughs> Some you got a yo-yo that's designed for tricks, but you don't know how to get it to wind up again. What do you mean? You've got to do that yourself, right? You, you, you have to fucking either roll, like wrap the string back around it or just do like one of these, right? You just take it and you fucking put it on the string and go like that. That'll get it started. And then you can just do the rest yourself, you know? But you just got to, you got to do that yourself, bro. Oh, uh, Mandigal Super Chat says, some rando texted me this. Should I be worried? Your mom received an honorable mention at the 2022 Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest for blowing five of the seven judges before being restrained by security. Well, I mean, yeah, you should be worried. Why are you only finding out about your mom's accomplishments like two years later, bro? Like that happened in 2022 and you're just finding out now? Whoever it was who texted you that has been very irresponsible in their timeliness, bro. You're the new lord of the board, and congratulations on having a wiener master for a mother. <laughs> Hot dog chugging mama! It doesn't catch like the wooden ones. Oh, well, do you have, um, is it the, like the yo-yo string on some yo-yos is actually tied to the axle. And if it's tied, you don't, you don't want it tied to the axle. You want it like, like looped at the end of the string. Like basically if I was going to put this wooden one on this string, then I would take this end and unwind it until it was big enough to go around the entire like yo-yo and then in the middle and then I would twist it back up, right? That's how you change yo-yo strings. So if it's tied to the axle, then it's not designed to work the same way. But if you did what I did there, it might still work. Even if it doesn't like, even if it doesn't have a catch specifically, you can wind it around it, and then if you, if you like flick it out, it'll tighten it up. It has bearings that make it spin forever, but it's not tied. Okay. All right. Well, then you need to tighten it up. You need to tighten it up, bro. So take the yo-yo and spin it. Spin it so that it tightens up the string so that it'll, it'll stick more on the fucking metal, the metal spoke or whatever the fuck you call the middle part. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's like, that's like everything that I know. Caustic, you think the Noid was Domino's. Do you have a concussion? That was like fucking, what, five, ten minutes ago that we were talking about the, the, the Noid and Domino's? Are you okay? Do you need assistance? Is somebody piping carbon monoxide into your house? Are you in a fucking parked car right now with the fucking, with it running? Do you got a hose coming from the car into the window and stuff? Just a few sweet more deep breaths and you're home free, bro. You can do it. You can fucking do it. <laughs> the last thing you'll see is the Noid as you go into the void. <laughs> Some your cousin had the Noid Nintendo game. I remember looking at like 
I think the box of that at the game rental store and thinking it would be cool to play, but I never did. I never, I never tried it. I'm curious about some fancy boy yo-yo. That's cool. It's cool that I bought a yo-yo on International Yo-Yo Day. That's fun. I love the, uh, I love the, the coincidence. Jagalim, you cured your Miku saltiness. You bought two English foil sets last night. Oh, there you go. There you go. Caustic, you have a Seven Up Spot Super Nintendo game. Super Nintendo? Was it Super Nintendo? I thought that game was for the Nintendo. Did they make one for the Super Nintendo as well? Millmaster in 1998 was the first ads. The cartoon man said pizza, pizza. Okay, so they couldn't have, they definitely couldn't have done it. Maybe they were trying to make people think of them instead of pizza, pizza. Like when you say pizza, pizza, you'd be like, that's the little Caesars guy. Maybe they reversed it. Juggle them, show you some yo-yo stuff. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe when i've practiced a bit more because i'm out of practice it's been like 15 years at least since i had a workable yo-yo so i can do some stuff i was successfully rocking the baby in the cradle but overall it's fairly unimpressive whip the yo-yo down set it up start to rock the baby but then the baby runs out of juice and i can't get it to fucking swing all the way back up to my hand which is annoying so I'm not, I'm not at performance level right now. I'm at amuse myself level. So if I stick with it and get better, then I'll show you some tricks, all right? I'll show you some tricks. Also, I'd need to make some space so I don't accidentally smash something. Fisher, your roommate opened his two Miku layers and both had Snapcaster? Well, he's got some serious luck gonna try and buy one off him have you considered trying to bully him instead i think they made spot for both sega genesis and nintendo okay i said the nintendo who said genesis hold on uh cool spot Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It is Super Nintendo. Clearly, I'm misremembering. Did they not have a spot for the Nintendo? Oh, they did. They had Spot was the one for the Nintendo. Cool Spot was the one for the Super Nintendo. Okay. All right. It all adds up. Little Caesars can't hold a trademark to Pizza Pizza in Canada. Well, if Pizza Pizza owned it, that makes sense. Spot was a Tetris style game. Oh yeah, it was the one with the the little like chips, right? The you flip the chips on the board or something like that. And then the Super Nintendo one is where he's walking along in his sunglasses. Fisher, he's the one that introduced you to Miku so you can guilt him about it. And he's got two. Tell him not to be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Let me get that Miku. Break stop. Are you okay? Are you having a seizure? He just comes in yelling, You mean little Kaisers? You okay? Jess, you want to find a PS2 emulator and find Cool Borders 2001? A PS2 emulator would be amazing. That'd be awesome. Then I can play Dark Cloud 2 again. Dark Cloud 2 was great, but like, I don't know, man. I, I don't think you can find emulators for that kind of shit. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't really know what's out there on the internet anymore. I know there's like ROMs and emulators for um, all like the really old school consoles, but like the PlayStation 2 and stuff like that, they're, they are, uh, like the PlayStation stuff is all like backwards compatible, right? 
Thompson, you have an N64 still. Cool. I have I have emulators. I got I got sent a um a tiny Super Nintendo that has emulators for all the old game systems, but the sound only works for the Super Nintendo one. But I do have the appropriate controllers for each, including a, a USB N64 controller, which is pretty cool. Sam, you sent me a link on the Discord for the yo-yo that you have? All right. Oh, funky. Hmm. It combines modern responsive play with counterweight play. It sounds, this sounds like I need an adult. It sounds very adult. Yeah, PlayStation 2 would be dope, man. PlayStation 2 was actually my favorite PlayStation of all time. I was okay with the PlayStation 3, but PlayStation 2 was where it was at. The first PlayStation was great as well, but the PlayStation 2 was awesome. Played a bunch of cool games on that one. I got some good nostalgia for that. What up, DJ Longhair? DB, you still have your Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, all of it, eh? Wow. Wow, I don't have, like, any of the old consoles. I ended up giving them away to people and stuff, you know? Like, there was, um, there was this guy who had, uh, moved to Canada from Iran, and he was running a convenience store, and he had two kids, and so I let them borrow the N64 that I had, Right? I let him borrow the N64 and the games that I had. And then after a while of him having it, he, he was, I just told him, you know what, you guys can keep it. It's all good. Like, I'm not using it. Your kids are having a lot of fun with it. And he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, no, for real, keep it. It's all good. Don't even worry. Don't even worry. So I've done that with other things too, just other video game systems and stuff. Put them in the hands of people who are going to play them and let them enjoy them, you know? So there are times... Where I'm like, man, it'd be cool if I had that stuff and could play these games again. But I'm cool with the choices that I made. I'm cool with it. Felonious T, yeah, you know what? You're right. PlayStation 2 had a ton of games and you could use it as a DVD player, which was dope. Jess, uh, hell yeah, buddy. <laughs> hell yeah, if you get that sorted, you let me know. You let me know. Fisher, you might have a spare PS2, won't have any controllers or memory cards. See, I wouldn't even know what to do if I ended up getting any kind of like old consoles because I don't have any games or controllers or anything for them either. So it'd be like, that's cool. PlayStation 2 is dope, right? But if I don't have any games or anything else with it, then, you know, all that shit just like, I don't... I haven't paid attention to any of it, but I presume that most of that stuff has just started to become expensive because people like to collect retro gaming. You see all kinds of different retro gaming setups and stuff. And I, I really dig the vibe of that stuff, but also like, I don't, I don't have the money to be building up like a retro collection of craziness. Felonious T, yep. That's right. PlayStation 2 was backwards compatible with the first PlayStation. It was great. That was a great system. The PlayStation 3 was all right. The PlayStation 4, I... PlayStation 3 is what made me give up on consoles. I didn't, um... I didn't, like, hate the PlayStation itself, but I just hated the whole cycle of... You couldn't just pop games in and play them. You always had to download updates and they had to update home and there was just all this crap and uh, like EB games really started slashing the trade-in rates. There were so many things that made me go, 
yeah, I'm not vibing with this PlayStation stuff anymore. So now the only console that I have, like in real life, actual physical console, is the Switch. Caustic, the Wii was able to play GameCube games. I, I remember, I, I, I vaguely remember that. That sounds right to me. <sighs> Consoles were their best when you could just pop games in and play them. That was supposed to be the charm of the console. It's a controlled environment where you don't have to worry that you don't have a particular piece of technology that you need to be able to play the game. Like any game you get can just go into the system and be played. And if a game needed a tiny little update, it wasn't that big a deal. But now it's just like the disc does not have the game on it. It just has like a web link or something that just is like, here you go, go here and actually download the game. And I don't like it. I don't like that. Because I'm an old man who doesn't like change. And things have changed too much for my likings. They've changed too much. In the video game like realm. Which has pushed me way more to Steam. Right? Because like 10 years from now I can be like, Man, I really remember playing this game on Steam. And I can go, oh yeah, it's still on my Steam account. I can go and play it whenever. Right? No trade in value. Although you, you do get like card drops that you can sell for a little bit and i did i i've i have utilized that effectively i've sold off the cards in my account to get like a couple of bucks in steam bucks and then used that when there's a deal that's how i got portal one and two together for a dollar 29 using card selling like i sold this card for a nickel i sold this card for a nickel Fisher, emulating games that require discs like Monster Rancher. You can actually get Monster Rancher on Steam. Carly did. And what it does to deal with the whole disc thing is you can just type in the name of whatever you want. So you can just type in like, like a Nirvana album or whatever. And it will give you a list of things to pick from. And then you pick that and you just get it. But some of the more powerful forms are gated behind like you have to get particular upgrades before you're allowed to put that particular like album in or whatever because there was some weezer album that i told carly to put in and the game was like you can't generate that monster yet so yeah that that kind of stuff is going to be impossible for a regular emulator to deal with unless it's somehow programmed in a way where you can pop discs into your computer Juggle them, you're a Sony boy and never stop. Enjoy what you enjoy, man. I used to love it. Heroes of Might and Magic. Yeah, Caustic. I can get down with that, bro. I think number three was my favorite, if I'm remembering right. Ever played Bat and Kaido on the Switch? It's an old GameCube game that you build a deck of attack cards to battle. Some, I've never even heard of it. This is the first time I've heard of it at all. Yeah, Jugum Carly loves Monster Rancher. That's why she ended up getting it on Steam. Jess, yeah, I know. My computer doesn't have a place to put discs either. The, the computer that we use just as the entertainment computer, like it's just, it's sole purpose is to just like watch videos on or whatever. So it's, it's not an impressive computer by any stretch. I just bought a bargain computer and it literally has the flap for a disk drive. That's how old this thing is. Now, it doesn't open. There's no actual disk drive under it. But it's an old case that was meant to be something that had like an actual pop-out disk drive. I don't see computers with those anywhere anymore. Fisher, your roommate's proud. He has a working PS1 disk of Monster Rancher. It's a collectible, dude. Caustic, never, never heard of Mule. Never heard of Mule. You know what I think would be really cool? And I, I don't think it exists anywhere, but it'd be really cool if somebody had set up an emulator 
of the old BBS games. Legend of the Red, um, Legend of the Red Dragon, Trades Wars, um, Land of Devastation. I'd love to get to try those again. Things have progressed so much. I remember when Chandelar was 100 megs and uh, our computer only had a 100 meg hard drive. 30 of that was used up by Windows. So it only had 70 megs in total and the game wanted 100 megs. I'm like, what? So I had Chandelar but couldn't play it. I was so disappointed. No, I didn't have it. I had to borrow it from somebody else. That's right. And I didn't, I didn't own the game then. And so I borrowed it once... Um, I borrowed it once we got a bigger computer. I was so excited. I was like, oh my god, it can finally have Chandelar on it. I remember playing Chandelar. I remember playing the old Ultima 7 Part 2. What up, Pyre? Oh, you know, you know the Kaidos game that he mentioned? It stopped you from being a completionist? Some games, completing them is just too tedious. There's just too much nonsense you have to do and you go, eh, you know what, I'm good. I'm good, I'll skip on that. Oh, there it is again. My phone asking for permission for the fucking weather location nonsense. Just... Stop this. Oh, I think I found it. I think I just found where to actually get it to stop forever. Of course, I'm saying that. And it'll probably still do it tomorrow. I'm probably deluding myself, but I think I figured it out. Caustic Ultima 8 is Ultima 8. Ultima 7 Part 2 is the second part of Ultima 7. Which was its own full game. Ultima 8 wasn't nearly as good as Ultima 7 Part 2. It's got some cool, it's got some cool theories. The game works with some cool ideas. I think I actually own both of those games. I think I own all the Ultima games on an Origins account, but I have no idea what even email address I signed up with it for a million years ago. The Kaido 1 and 2 got an HD remaster, and 2 is a prequel. All right. All right. Caustic, I remember Shining Force. Shelly, you sent me a remix, Euro 80s Techno Club remix <laughs> of my song. All right. All right, I will check that out. I will check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Ultima 7 Part 2 was great. And then they had the expansion for it, Serpent Isle. But Ultima 8 was not as good. And Ultima 9 was like an abomination. I don't know if they went any more after that, honestly. That might have been the end of the Ultimas. Shall we? Computers think Dink is a pejorative. They think it means weenus, bro. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You guys ever play the old uh, TSR D&D &D games where you like you could actually carry your characters over from one game to the next? And it was like a full-on D&D &D adventure. You could actually like pick out the color patterns of what you guys looked like and stuff. The graphics were bad, but 
The gameplay was fun. Obviously a lot of reading because it's D&D, right? But there was a bunch of them. And they would like progress you up level wise so you didn't have to have characters that you carry over but you could and you get to keep all your gear which is really neat man video games were so much different back in the day back before anybody had thought of trying to sell you the ability to save and fast travel and all this kind of crap, all these microtransactions where you would just get an entire game. That's what you bought. You just bought a game. There was no, like, anytime I see a game is free, I'm kind of like, eh. Machine Wizardry, bro. I remember the first Wizardry for the Nintendo when me and my friend realized that every once in a blue moon, they would, ro you would roll you, it would randomly generate a character that had a boost to the amount of ability points that you started with. And you could actually make one of the like elite classes. Like, yo, normally you can only make like fighters and thieves and stuff like that. But you've got enough points that you can actually make a straight up samurai. We would just keep re-rolling new characters over and over and over and over. Like, it, we would spend like an hour or two just rolling characters to get the stats that we wanted. And... I played Wizardry so much that I'm sure I'd, I wouldn't be able to do it anymore. But the the end dungeon, which is all in fucking darkness, which is one of the biggest dick moves in gaming history, actually. It's like you're in a fucking labyrinth and they just turn the screen black. So you have to move by fucking memory. You're on the floor with the toughest enemies in the entire game and they just black out your screen so you can't see where you're going. But I had the entire path memorized. So I could just, boom, get there every time with no problems. Fisher, you've got you've got three PlayStation 2s you can fix up. Get out the get out the welding. Get out the welding gear. Juggling the Eye of Judgment. Oh, that was the it like scanned cards. But the problem was is people could just print out paper slips. And the thing would register it the exact same way. So you didn't actually need the the real product to play with it. So their whole plan of selling boosted, it all went belly up. Machine, yeah, ninjas were OP. You had lords as well. Lords are pretty solid. Ninjas were gross. I don't know if you could actually get enough points to start as a ninja though. Because a ninja had pretty high requirements, right? I know there was a couple classes that no matter what you did, you just couldn't, you couldn't have enough points to start with to make them. But you could definitely make gross dudes and pick some of the elite classes. Man, oh man. I can't believe how long ago that was. feels like a million years ago for real it feels like i was a kid in another lifetime in another universe that's that's what it feels like everything is so different now and i'm sure like fucking 30 years from now i'll be thinking about this time and being like, man everything's so different fisher you remember i had judgment had the proxy set for every card yep well that's what did it in right that's what did it in. Oh, man. It's crazy. It's crazy how much things have changed. But there's a lot of awesomeness nowadays, too. So whatever, right? What are you going to do? Will people still play video games in 30 years? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Video games are awesome. Video games are are becoming, I don't know, I think more of an entertainment form for people. Like, the people that you, like, you wouldn't see that many 40 or 50 year olds playing like fucking Nintendo and Atari and all, and 60 year olds, you wouldn't see that shit. But everybody plays mobile games on their phones now. I see them on the bus all the time. People of all different ages. 
playing all these goofy games that honestly look terrible, but whatever, right? Like, I find a lot of that to be awful. It's hard to find mobile games that actually, even, even knowing what kind of a trap they are trying to get me to spend money and knowing I'm not gonna, it's hard to find anything that's even, like, I'd rather sit there and do nothing than play most mobile games that exist. And video games are places where you can tell epic stories and do all kinds of craziness, right? So I don't see that. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Speaking of games, tomorrow's the Modern Horizons pre-release. I'll be going to that. I'm going to that. That'll be a good time. The games were like so primitive back then. Like there's so many games that when you play them now, you're just like, this is so short. Like, and there's not that much to the gameplay. But there's a lot of current era games that feel, even if they have nice graphics, they feel empty, you know? Where it's just like, well, it looks nice, but it's, I'm not connecting with it in any way. It certainly is an interesting time to be alive. I want to dive into to more of the games that I have kicking around already. Because I've got, I've definitely got some cool games that I have not even tried yet. I think the next big title that's coming along that I'd be interested in checking out, like for real, is Grand Theft Auto 6. Because Grand Theft Autos are a lot of fun. Those games have delivered... A lot of entertainment. I have fond memories of uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, my absolute favorite of all time. Like, I loved Vice City so much. Getting Ray Liotta to be the voice of the main guy, great choice. And picking other, other people from the Mafia movies and stuff like that to be the voices in it. Like, they really cast great people and the story's a lot of fun. The gameplay on on the Steam version of it is kind of rough. It's kind of rough. So there is that. It's not the same as the original days. Every day, what's my Epic Game account up to now? It must have 100. Yeah, there's. I would say there's like a 150 games in it. I just added a new one today. Because they every, every Thursday, I load up my Epic account and I grab whatever the free game is. Knowing that it doesn't matter if I play it today. It doesn't matter if I play it tomorrow. One day, I will play this game. So today's was some some Marvel RPG game. Some tactical Marvel RPG that I cannot remember the name of. But it's one of the pricier ones. Because they show you the prices of the game like slashed out down to zero. So normally they sell it for 80 bucks. And I do like getting big name games for free. Like it's pretty sweet. The Epic Game Store is pretty sweet that they give you free games, but while Carly has used them to get Darkest Dungeons 2 because you couldn't get it anywhere else, I've never bought anything from the Epic Game Store because I spent my money building a Steam account, right? Although there is enough stuff on my Epic's game account that if they had a game that I really wanted and I couldn't get it on Steam, I would buy it from them because I've got a ton of games in, in their cat so it's smart what they're doing like they that's how they tried to compete with steam because steam had the we came up with this we got here first uh, position which is I mean that's some hardcore king of the hill that you got to fight against right but epic games is doing a good job of it I've got a lot of games in my epic account cost do you think Chaz Palminteri has done some voiceover stuff he's good man he's good I like him in The Usual Suspects. The Usual Suspects is a really fun movie. <sighs> All right, my friends. It has been fun hanging out with you and talking about chicken and video games and life. It's time for me to depart, and we shall get back together soon. 
Farewell for now. Fair travels to you. And now I just sit here and don't end the stream. That's what I'm going to do one day. I'm just going to say that and then just sit here. And people are like, does he know? And just like pick my nose and whatever. Just, just not leave. <laughs> Anyways, bye.